attempt to get a, a greater range of transformational proof out there, I'm going to kind of break up as many of these as I can to show you an approach using the transformational structure. Now again, I want you to understand something is that this isn't a transformational versus Euclidean. This is all Euclidean. This is just an approach. You can approach it algebraically. Uh, you can approach it in a lots of different ways. That's why many theorems have many approach, uh, many proofs. And in a likewise manner, I'm going to prove that vertical angles are equal. And I'm not going to use the old classic. I'm going to use a transformational approach. And so I am trying to build a repertoire of these types of things. So uh, our goal is to prove that BEA is congruent to DEC. In other words, I'm trying to prove vertical angles are congruent. And I'm going to use the basis of a transformation to do that. In this case, I like the use of a rotation of 180 degrees. Now, yes, it must be established what are the characteristics of a rotation of 180. Let me tell you what you need to know. One, that it forms uh, an angle of 180 degrees. The original A, the center rotation O, and A prime, that angle will be 180 when you're done. Second, when you're done a, a, a rotation of 180 degrees, a point will always land on its opposite ray. Important idea coming up. And also that it will maintain the distance, of course, from the center of rotation. So the only unique thing about a rotation of 180 is the idea of landing on an opposite ray. So let's start. I'm going to first describe what transformation we're going to take and do, and then we will see the fallout from there. So I'm going to begin by stating a rotation of 180 degrees about point E. So I've described what I'm about to do. Now I'm going to describe what that physically does in the diagram. Maps point B onto ray ED known as B prime. So I know that when I rotate this 180 degrees, B prime will land somewhere on the other ray the same distance away, but it has to land on that ray. That's important. This same rotation maps point A onto its opposite ray, EC, and that point, of course, will be A prime, somewhere maybe out here. Finally, I'm going to discuss one more point that gets involved in this rotation. It maps point E onto itself. The reason it maps it onto itself is it's the center of rotation, so it goes nowhere. Now, I need to now connect logically how I know that angle is equal to the one that's over there. So let's walk through a little bit of logic. First, angle BEA has to be congruent to the image we just created, B prime, E prime, and uh, A prime. The original BEA has to be equal to its image always because rotations are isometric. Very important word. You and I spent a lot of time earlier in the chapter developing the isometric nature of rotations, reflections, and translations. That What it means is the angle will be identical to its image when you're done. Angles, sides, everything copies the same. 
So I know that this is equal to the image I just made on those opposite rays. But I also know that that image will be congruent to D E C because they share the same vertex and rays. Or another way you could write that is it because it mapped it directly onto that angle. Final little argument here. This is a nice one, gets used a lot. It's a nice little idea. If I know this angle is congruent to this angle, they're the same. BEA then is congruent to the image, but the image is congruent to DEC. These must be congruent because of the transitive property. of equality. The transitive property basically links things that are equal to each other. A equals B, B equals C, A equals C. This equals its image, the image equals this angle, these two must be equal. This is a beautiful, fairly simply logically laid out proof that vertical angles must be equal.